Today we're going to be attempting to recreate the uh, formation of a dust devil. And the first principle we need to talk about is um, a temperature gradient. Now, in a situation where you have a sun heating a desert floor, in some situations you can have uh, a temperature that's built up to some degree greater than the air at some distance above it, which can cause a temperature gradient, where you have a greater temperature at the, at the, uh, the floor, and as you move up in altitude vertically, uh, your temperature is going to decrease as you rise. Well, what, what this can cause is uh, air bubbles at the surface. Because of the, great, the greater temperature, you also have a lesser density, which can cause these air pockets to have a tendency to rise. Now, what that can do in certain situations as you have air moving across, across a heated floor, such as a desert floor, um, if it's tripped or in some way um, induces vorticity, it can cause a rotational flow that as it rises through a temperature gradient, can cause this inverted bathtub drain um, phenomenon. And you have this air swirling as it rises. And due to the stretching of that vortex as it rises, and due to the uh, principle of conservation of angular momentum, as it stretches out that vortex and that dust level, it makes it skinnier, which also causes it to spin at greater angular velocities in a tighter formation, which can give a visualization of the dust level as can be seen on as it pours. And due to the dust particles that move with the airflow, that's what's allowed you to visualize these forces that form. Now, as that air is cooled, once it re reaches the peak, a peak at a certain altitude where it cools enough to no longer um, be buoyant enough to um, to rise and against gravity, then that cool air then just moves back down to the center of the vortex of the dust devil. And this causes a continuity. Um, the circulation where your hot air rises and your cool air comes back down. And it enables for the dust of double vortex to be sustained. And also due to the airflow moving past the dust devil, it also, because of surface friction at the interface of the dust devil and the air moving past, causes the, board, the dust devil to move around, which also causes it to move to hot spots and also allows for it to be sustained as the dust devil moves around. And now Bryce is going to talk more about how we're going to perform this experiment. I'm going to explain. We're beginning to attempt to simulate a dust devil using a series of parameters. Now, the prediction of this dust devil is dependent on four key parameters, or we feel is dependent on four key parameters, that through continual recreations of dust devils, we will be able to implement and calculate the actual circulation and velocities of the air as it moves through these parameters. And now we'd like to transfer over to the actual apparatus and explain how we believe that we can create these dust devils through the experimental process. This is the surface that we have created to simulate a desert floor. We've got an uneven surface, but we're actually using aluminum foil because it'll transfer the heat rather well from the stoves or the fires that we put underneath this. But as the air naturally blows across this, we're hoping to have vortices created by the many rough spots and uneven locations in this that will be brought into a vertical formation and then stretched out and elongated. So using this, we hope to see these results in implementing smoke or something else into the stream of flow to create the visualization of the actual air motion that we'll be able to create.
as can be seen from the video, our experiment didn't work quite as planned. Uh, the main reason for this is the lack of environmental control of both the flow and our simulated desert floor. Um, so our biggest problem was um, in the atmosphere, you have an atmospheric boundary layer that's created on the desert floor, whereas our flow was created from circulation in the room, which we saw from smoke created large scale turbulence and not the uh, any, not anything like a boundary layer in the atmosphere. Uh, additionally, our surface was much too small for the scale, <coughs> uh, so we had leading edge effects, which for a sharp flat plate, uh, the leading edge effects are for a number much greater than one. Uh, we, had, we had a blunt um, plate, pretty much, so the leading edge effects would be uh, effective for a much greater Reynolds number. Um, also, for a desert, since the desert floor can be assumed to be almost <laughs> infinitely wide, we have an almost infinite source of hot air coming into the dust devil <laughs> to fuel it and keep it going. Whereas in our case, we had a relatively small surface, and so we didn't have that almost infinite source of hot air to fuel it, anything that would have been created. Um, <clears throat> Also, we had a hot spot that formed on our surface. This created um, large buoyant plumes, and, and we weren't, we did not create the uniform heating of the surface like we planned with the heater underneath our surface. <coughs> and lastly, the smoke that was used to visualize the flow introduced both turbulence and a velocity into the flow, which affected the conditions. So. In conclusion, um, our environmental conditions were not controllable enough for the experiment to succeed. Um, in the future, a much larger plate would be needed, and it would need to be uniformly heated, which was, was, which was initially our plan. <coughs> <coughs>